Okay, everybody, at ease. Smoke them if you got them. We're going to talk about role playing. So stick around. That's an order. <laughs> Old Man Grognard here, and today we're going to talk about World War II. Operation White Box from Small Niche Games. This is a role-playing game about World War II, mostly in the European theater. So uh, there's that. I found this one to be fascinating. This is one of the ones where I didn't know if I wanted to do it, but I did it anyway. But <coughs> about in the middle of reading the book, I just started getting excited about it. It's a good, it's a good book. Here it is. It's a digest size book. It's about 185 pages. And it's really good. It's done, it's the author is Peter C. Spahn who puts out really nice stuff for small niche games. Uh, most of it is uh, Swords and Wizardry and Labyrinth Lord compatible. This is based on Swords and Wizardry white box. So, I'm constantly amazed people who take things like White, uh, white Box, the original D&D, or BX, and do something fantastic with it. And this is fantastic. Here's a little look at the book. What you're playing is, uh, you're not doing the, you know, you're not the soldier on the front lines. You are part of an elite team to go out and do things for the government to help win the war for the, for the military. Uh, blowing up bridges, extracting people, sabotage, things like that. Uh, think Dirty Dozen and Glorious Bastards, things like that. Um, and it's just, it's fascinating uh, because it's really flexible. It's, it's great for a like one or two shot, no more than three sessions because you're going on missions behind enemy lines mostly. Um, and you can do this before a battle, after a battle, during a battle, because it has mass combat rules in there. Um, there are, uh, since this class and level, um, there are nine classes. There is the Charmer. There is the Combat Engineer, the Grunt, the Maquis, which is the French Resistance helping you, helping the Allies. Sniper. Tactician, Wheelman, and the Uberlaufer. Uberlaufer is an ex-Nazi, ex-German, or rather, ex... He hates the Nazis. He wants to help the Allies. So, there he is. You have that chance. Um, it's got a great timeline in it. it got great equipment. Um, there's three levels of play. It's an optional rule. Traditional, Heroic, and Inglorious. Now, that mainly factors into the hit dice because all say all the classes are the same hit dice uh, traditional is d6 you know so it's kind of gritty uh, heroic you get to roll a d10 for your hit dice and in glorious it's a d20 for your hit dice so depending on what level of play you want to play you can do that that way and there's only five levels in the game because they're they're thinking is that um, the war only lasted from 39 to 45, for the U.S. anyway. Um, but So they only give you five levels of play. You can actually combine this with some other ge modern game that has class and level, or not. I mean, gangbusters. Play gangbusters. Play it up into the 40, early 40s, and all of a sudden, boom, the war happens, and he enlists, or, what, or whatever the characters do. But that's beyond this. You can do that. That's what I'm saying. This is very adaptable to this and other things. Uh, stats for NPCs and other things. Like I said, equipment. Um, you got, since it's Swords and Wizardry, you either got Ascending or Descending ar <laughs> ascending or descending Armor class. They give you stats for both. Um, and each class has special abilities and other things. You have a base to hit bonus that goes up. Um, and the mass, I like the mass combat rules because it's so simple. It boils down to a couple of die rolls by the game master for each side. And it takes place in rounds. And I'm not talking about traditional D&D &D rounds of combat. Although there is that too, but that, I mean, this is different. What happens what is 
if your group is on a mission during a battle, the battle will happen around them, but it will be decided in rounds because the the, G, the GM will go, okay, round one ends, round two. Be. At the end of the round, they will roll a die for each side, and whoever has the highest die roll wins. Now, where the players come in is the fact that what they do, the game master adds pluses or minuses to what, however, whatever they're doing, they add pluses or minuses to whatever side. So if they're blowing up bridges, if they're causing sabotages, if they're wrecking train stations, if they're extracting somebody, if they're sniper fire, whatever they're doing will add pluses and minuses. And the rules state that you should probably go about odd rounds, like three rounds or five rounds or something like that, because it's easier to show the ebb and flow of the battle, and that way you don't have to have like a tiebreaker or something like that. So what you do is you roll, and whoever has the highest roll, whatever side, wins that round. And then at the end, you tally it up, and simple. Whoever has the most wins, wins the battle. That's it. Boom. So you can have stuff going on. Everything else is role-playing, pretty much. I mean, you know, you, you can... You can have the, the war affect them in some way or another while they're doing it, but at the same time, it's just, you know, role-playing stuff, or you can reduce it to probably random encounters or something like that. Um, it's it's a good good game for, like I said, two, three, two, three sessions at a time. I wouldn't say, I mean, you could do a campaign with it, I guess, but, you know, I think that's a bit out of the scope of the game. Uh, they also give you really nice... Um, variations on it um alternate settings and what i call add-ons that they, they call that oh and this is also compatible with of course swords and wizardry white box or the sci-fi game white star which is also based on this uh which which um got me what the first thing that got me excited about this is okay i don't have to play this game as written I don't have to play World War II. I could adapt it to, you can play Star Wars with this. Just, you know, get some more stats, different stats, change the equipment around, things like that. But use the use the rules. Um, so you can use like White Star or something like that. If you want to do the Battle of Helm's Deep, you know, change the equipment around and stuff, do it with this. Or some other Tolkien-esque, fantasy-esque battle. Do it with this. What got me really excited was the alternate settings because first of all they do a 1939 space setting if you want to use it so you got like nazis in space and things like that um so, you know almost buck rogersy but what really excited me was the option of nazi super science and nazi occult now the occult okay you know hitler likes his toys you know, likes his little magic toys. Uh, you, that's a real Raiders of the Lost Star or, or a Last Crusade type vibe to it if you want to do that. But what really got me is the Nazi super science. It's not too hard to use that as a basis for creating Hydra. That means you can, you and a bunch of players can actually write up Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos or... Captain America would fit in perfect in this game. So you could do like a short campaign with the Howlers and Cap and Nick Fury in World War II. Frankly, I think it'd rock. So I would love, this is what really got me excited. I mean, this is, it's flexible. In game and out. Go look for it, get it. Where to get it? Okay, I'm gonna direct you to drive through RPG or RPG now. Um, because they have a plethora of how to get these. Um, the PDF, $7.99. No problem. Easy startup. Uh, print, soft color, black and white, which is this. $17.99, soft color cover, $34.99. Also $34.99 for the hard color cover, if you want to go that way. And they do have combos of PDF and print. I think the highest is 42 for the hardcover and PDF. So you go on. Just I throw this, you know, I just throw this in the bag in case I need it because not only is it a great game, it's a great source of of supplement and it's a great source of uh, 1940s wartime. 
as far as I I mean, it gives you like a timeline in here of World War II. And also what I really like is Historic World War II Special Forces Actions. And this gives, there's like one, two, three, four, um, I think it's four pages. Yeah, four pages of one paragraph each of major, major operations in the war, like um, Operation Jubilee, the infamous Operation Market Garden, A Bridge Too Far, Operation Varsity, uh, the Grand Sasso Raid, things like that. So you can take this and just go, okay, I want to do a mission to help the allies in this battle. You know, and you don't have to play Americans either. I mean, you know, they give you the option of doing like, like I said, French Resistance or ex-Nazis. There's nothing wrong with you playing a Russian soldier or something like that. And it could, you could also do a campaign of like all resistance fighters which I think is kind of neat, uh, who just help the Americans or the French or the British or whoever's, whoever's there. Play a, play a British colonel. Those are great for like charmers and things like that. Um, and it's just, mm, I just can't say enough good things about this game. Just as a, you know, just to try it once. Uh, they even give you a little sample scenario in there about getting getting a bridge or blowing up a bridge or something like that and one where there's just it's almost like a kind of world war ii version of a, a character funnel of each player plays three characters and drop them on the beach of normandy with special instructions to get rid uh, make three objectives when those three objectives are achieved there the game is over you know the, the whoever the allies won whatever or whoever won one um and once you can get used to the mass combat rules that way, and they can get used to playing this and what the mindset of what they have to do. But anyway, I'm going on on this. But hey, World War II Operation White Box by Small Niche Games. Go out and get it. And if you like it, tell me about it or anything else you want at oldmangrognard at gmail.com. So until next time, bye-bye.